Hello and welcome to Revision Classes on Television. Today, we will be having a session in mathematics. Our guide is Shegun Ogumbayo, and our focus today is bearing and distance. Bearing can be defined as the clockwise angular movement between two distance places. What I mean by two distant places is, if you have our cardinal point, which is the north, the east, the west, and the south. Now, the clockwise angular movement between either from north to east, or from north to south, or from north to west, is what we call what? Bearing. Which means, for a bearing to take place, the movement is going to start from the north, then end at the north, not in clockwise movement. Now we have some rules that we help us to solve, some rules that we, that we need to use in solving bearing. Now we need to take note of this clockwise. What they mean is, when you are taking reading in bearing, one thing you need to consider is, it always starts from the north pole, and it's going to be in clockwise direction, and when it starts from the north pole, it move and end at the north pole, which means when you want to take bearing of anything, it can never go from anti-clockwise. It always go from what? From clockwise. Then another thing you need to take note again is number two. When we go back to this, our cardinal point, it means that if I start taking my words, taking my reading from the north, when it touches this place, from this, from the north to the east, it makes an angle of what? 90 degree. Then from the east to south, it makes another what? 90 degree. Then from north to south, when we add this together, it's going to give us a total number of what? 180 degree. And we can call this one, angle on a straight line is always equal to what? 180 degree. Then when I had another 90, from south to this place, this is 90 degree. Then from west to north again, this is another 90 degree. When we sum up all these degrees together, it's going to give us what? 360 degrees. And that is why we are told that all angles from while taking reading in bearing is equal to what? 360 degrees. Number three. When you are given a question under bearing and you are asked to illustrate it in a diagram, it means when you want to illustrate or represent it in a diagram, it's going to form a triangle, it's going to be in a triangle form. Example one, we have Now, this example, we are told that three sheep, P, Q, and R, are at C. The bearing of Q from P is 30 degree, and the bearing of P from R is 300 degree. If P, Q is equal to 5 kilometer, and P, R is equal to what? 8 kilometer. A, we are asked to represent what? The information in the diagram. B, we are asked to calculate correct to three significant figure 
distance between Q and R, and height to brain of what? R from Q. Solution. Now, the first one, which is A, we are asked to represent this information given to us in a diagram. The first thing that we need to do is let's start, try to interpret the first statement. We are told that three ships, P and Q, are at C. Fine. Now, they went further and told us that the bearing of Q from P is what? 30 degree. Which means the first thing I need to do is I will draw my cardinal point. Now, we are told that the bearing of Q from P is what? 30 degree. Which means if from this point to this point is 90 degree, definitely it means that my 30 degree will be along this line. Which means this angle is going to be what? 0, 30 degree, which represents my P. Because they said of Q from what? From P. Then this is going to be my what? My Q. And the bearing of P from R is what? Is 300 degree. Which means the bearing of P from R is 300 degree. If I take my point from here, I have something like this. Now remember, from here to this place is what? Is 90. Added to this is going to be what? 180. Then from here to this point is going to be what? 270. Then from here to this place is going to be what? 300, which means 360 rather. Which means my 300 will fall in along this line, starting from the North Pole. Which means all this place represent what? My 300 degree. And this is what? Since it's from what? From bearing of P from R. So this place is going to be what? My R. Then from here, I can join my diagram so that it will take this look. This is the information we are asking us to give according to the question, the diagram. But there are some angles that we are, is missing here that we need to find so that it will be easier for us to solve the question B. Now, if you take note at this angle, we have this to be 30 degrees. There is what we call Z angle. Z angle, or we call it alternate angle. If you consider this angle, listen, if you consider this, this and this, since from here to this place is 30 degree, and I told you that this is a Z angle, which means if this is 30 degree, then this small angle will also be equal to 30 degree. Now, fine. Let's move to this angle. Now, let's find this angle. We know that from this from here to this place is 300. If from here to this place is 300, and remember from the second rule when solving, for, when solving bearing, it said what? All angles formed while taking reading in bearing is equal to 360 degrees, which means if from here to this place is 90, then from here to this place will be what? 180. Then by the time I had another 90 degree to this place, it's going to be me. So from here to this place, it's going to be what? 270. Now to get the, and we are told that from this place to this place is what? 300. Then to get this small angle, all I just need to do is I will subtract 270 degree from 300 degree. So that at the end, I will have 300 degree minus 270 degree. And this will give me what? 30 degree. Which means if this place is 30, from here to this place is going to give me what? 30 degree. Now remember what I said earlier. I said when you have a Z angle, or we call it alternate angle, it means that we have something like this. If you consider this angle, we have a Z angle. Which means whenever we have a Z angle or alternate angles, those angles are always the same. So if this place is 30 degree, definitely this place will also be equal to what? 30 degree. Then remember, when we start, when I was explaining the bear, bearing and distance, the definition, I said something like from north to east is equal to 90 degree. Now it means that if from 
this place to this place is equals to 90 degree and we are given from here to here to be equals to 30 then to get the remaining angle for this one is going to be what 90 minus 30 degrees so that this remaining angle will be what 60 degree and by the time i had these two values together this is going to give me a right angle which is equal to what 90 degree so at the end i will have something like this let me re redraw my diagram this is my q this place is my p and this other place is what my r so this is equal to what 90 degree but from the question we are told that if pq is equal to five kilometer which means pq is equal to five kilometer it means that pq is equal to what five kilometer and pr is equal to what eight kilometer pr is equal to what eight kilometer now we are asked to find what for the second one we are asked to calculate to three significant figure distance between q and r so we are looking for the distance between q and r on that trigonometric you able to see some rules we call them sines and cosines rule. In fact, I will also advise you to learn more about Pythagorean theorem. All these three formula will really help us when solving bearing and distance. Now, in this case, we are given two sides. We are asked to look for the third size, which is the QR. Now, looking at this diagram, we can apply Pythagorean theorem and Using Pythagorean theory, we have something like this. By using Pythagorean theory, by using Pythagorean theory, we have what? If this is our diagram, which means my hypotenuse is going to be QR raised to power 2 is equals to what? PQ raised to power 2 plus PR raised to power 2. Now, since we are looking for PQ, all we just need to do, we substitute whatever we have from the diagram into this equation. Then we are, we'll be able to get our QR. So from here, we have what? Our QR raised to power 2 is equals to, our PQ is equals to what? 5 kilometer, which is the same thing as 5 raised to power 2, plus our PR is equals to what? 8 kilometer, which is what? 8 raised to power 2. Then from here, we have what? Our QR raised to power 2 is equals to, 5 raised to power 2 is going to give us 25, plus 8 raised to power 2 is going to give me what? 64 and at the end i will have my qr raised to power 2 is equals to 25 plus 64 is going to give me what 89 then if this is 89 remember that we are looking for qr and not qr square so from here all we just need to do is is either i square both sides uh, that is what we are going to do squaring both sides we have what by Squaring both sides, squaring both sides, we have this power, this square we eradicate, so we'll be left with what? QR is equal to what? The root of 89. Then the root of 89, what is the root of 89? My QR is now going to be equal to, I think the root of 89 is going to give me what? 9.4. 340 kilometer. But remember from the question, we are asked to correct our final answer must be in three significant figures. Now, in this case, this is not in three significant figures. So please take note whenever you are solving any question related to what bearing, be careful 
be very, very careful. Make sure that you read everything given to you so that it will be easier for you to solve. Some people, they will stop here and they will believe that they've arrived to the final answer. If an examiner wants to mark this, he's not going to give you your full mark because according to the instruction, you are told that you should leave your final answer in what? Three significant, significant figures. So in this case, to change this one to three significant figures, all we just need to do is we reduce this to three figures. So it means that my QR is now going to be equal to what? 9.43 kilometer. Therefore, it means that the distance between Q and R is equal to what? 9.4 kilometer. Then the I2, the I2, we are asked to find the bearing of R from Q, which means when we are looking for the bearing of R from Q, it means that, consider, let's go back to our diagram. Since we are looking for the bearing of R from Q, it means we are looking from, starting, we go to the Q, Q point, starting from the north, and it ends as what? From to this place, that is the bearing we are looking for. Now, in order to get this bearing, all we just need to do is, the first thing we need to do, we need to get this small angle. And how are we going to get this small angle? You can use different method. I can decide to use my, to use Sokatoa. I can use sine. I can decide to use tan. Depends on the angle given to you. If we consider this angle, we know that we have this one. We have this place. We have, I can decide to take this one, or this angle to be equal to x theta. Now, if this is my x theta, then it means that I have this place, remember from the question, we have PQ to be equal to what? 5 kilometer. And PR to be equal to what? 8 kilometer. Then we know our new distance, which is QR, is equal to what? 9.4340 kilometer. Now, all we just need to do, I can decide to make use of tan, tan, theta, or I can decide to make use of sine theta. So let's make use of tan theta. From our soccer tour, we know that tan. Theta is always equal to what? Opposite over hypotenuse. Then which means, since I've decided to represent my time theta, my theta as what? X degree. So this is now going to be what? Tan X degree is equal to what? What is my opposite? The angle facing this line is always represent our opposite. So if this is my opposite, then this other one is going to be my adjacent. And the long line is going to be my what? Hypotenuse. So it's going to be what? Tan theta is what? Opposite over adjacent. Adjacent, not hypotenuse. Okay. So to get our bearing, all we just need to do is we need to find this theta. And I represent my theta as x degree. So which means... Using Sokatoa, we know that tan x degree is equal to opposite over adjacent. And which means my tan x degree is equal to what? What is my opposite? My opposite is equal to 8 over what is my adjacent? My adjacent is equal to 5. Then my tan x degree is equal to 8 divided by 5 is going to give me 1.6. But remember that we are looking for x and not tan x. So all I just need to do is my x degree, I will find the tan inverse of 1.6. So that we have tan inverse of 1.6. And by the time I find the tan inverse of 1.6, I will have my x degree to be equal to 57.6. 9, 9. Now, which means from here 
to this place is equal to what? 57.99 degree. But remember that we are looking for the bearing from this place to this place. So all I just need to do is I will subtract 30 degree from 57.9 to give me the remaining small angle. Then remember that if from here to this place is 180 degree, all I just need to do is, I mean from here to this angle is 180 degree. All I just need to do is, I will subtract 180, I will subtract whatever I have from here, from 180 degree to get the remaining angle. What I'm saying in excess is, if from here to this place is 30 degree, from here to this place is 57.99 degree, it means that, therefore, I will have 57.99 degree minus 30 degree, which means I want to get this small angle. And when I subtract this from 57.99 degree, I will have what? 27.99 degree. Then, which means this my small angle is equal to 27.99 degree. But remember that we are looking for from this point to this point. All I just need to do is, since I know that from here to this last angle is 180 degree, then to get the remaining angle, I will just subtract my 27.99 degree from 180 degree. So that at the end, I will have what? 180 degree minus 27.99 degree. And this will give me what? 180 degree minus 27.99 degree. This is supposed to give me 152.01 degree. Then since we are asked to leave our answer in um, nearest degree, so this is now going to be equal to 152 degree. And that is the bearing of R from Q which means from this place to this angle is going to give me 152 degree. So like I said earlier, I told you that whenever you want to solve anything that related to bearing, always remember to take these three key points. The first one, make sure that you are taking your point from the North Pole in clockwise direction and it always ends at what? At the North Pole. You can never take it from anti-clockwise direction. Always remember that all angle getting from bearing or from the cardinal point is always equals to 360 degree. And any question that you want to solve on that bearing, it always end up getting a diagram that related to triangles. And also, I said, try as much as possible to know more about signs and cosines rule because there are some questions that it will involve using sign rules and cosine rules. You can subscribe to NTA series on YouTube to watch or download past episodes of revision classes on television. That's the much we can take on the program today. Do join us next time for another educating session.